Okay. Okay. Sorry, let me apologize for that. So, let me apologize for that disconnection. I don't know what's wrong with my connection. So, I have to use another connection right now. And, uh, okay, fine now. So, I have to use another connection to get it back. I apologize for that. So, as we are saying, I said... There are so I said there are so many people that have been spending plenty plenty in agriculture and they are not getting it right. I don't want that flesh. I don't want that flesh. Walking around. Okay, since I'm not using laptop. Okay, I said there are so many people in agriculture that have invested so much and uh, they are not making money because of the challenges human resources and every other thing that have been affecting us now and i promise today i'll be discussing i'll be discussing a bit about how you can invest how you can invest with minimal how you can invest with minimal with minimal stress you see there are some businesses that some of us doesn't don't know in, in the in the rural side, let me explain something. During harvest, there's there's some people I know. I'll just explain briefly about the business to you. In the rural, it's one of the businesses. In the rural side, you find out that every, right now there's no rain, and we're about getting to rainy season. So farmers now are rushing. We are planting. You know, I'm a farmer, so I'm part of them. So we are planting. We have crops and everything and whatever. You see, by the time we finish planting, right now, by the time we finish planting our corn, our our soya beans and every other thing. You find out that nobody, everybody is broke. They don't have money again. So by the time it's harvesting period in September, October, November, you know, that's when it will be dry season, farmers will be harvesting. Most people don't have money again. Like, I don't have, I, uh, most of the farmers around will not have money again. But they have produce. They have products that they can use in place of money. So what you, what a business that I know, you know, is most times rural, rural, People, rural dwellers, uh, we call them it's some other rural dwellers that do this kind of business. So what they do is there is a look. They invest money. Now this one, you're not going to give anybody your money. You, what, what a man does, what some people does, do around there is that look. They look for some people they can trust. And then they send them into villages. You know, they go, you know, we have, like me now, in our home village, yeah, we still have some villages which we ahead. So they go into all those sub villages and then they buy the crops for them. You won't go and those farmers they are looking for who we buy from them because then they need that money to pay their workers. Remember in one of my in one of our classes eh, I mentioned that we normally get laborers from Bono, eh, Benin Republic, from Burkina Faso, from every other thing. And by the time we get those laborers, we have to pay them at the end of the year. When I say we, I mean we farmers. So it is that end of the year, by September or October, November, farmers have a lot of produce to sell. So if you have the finance, how you need to do, get a store. You can get a storage facility. It could be in your place. It could be anywhere. You can better it in your place where you have the storage facilities. So all you need to do with the storage facility is that you now get people that you know, they can ride bike. What they do is, hey, they will go into all those villages and be buying. 10 bags, 2 bags, 3 bags, 5 bags. Now, let me give you one instance. By the time we were harvesting last year, by the time farmers were harvesting last year, uh, by the time farmers was, was, were harvesting last year, a bag of corn was like 8,000 naira. Now, this bag of corn, uh, I'm talking of September, October, after like a month or two months, it becomes like 10,000 naira. So far we say, yeah, and I've sold some of my crops now, but they need money. After like another two months, one month again, it has come to 11,000, 12,000. Still, they will still be selling because they need the money. You understand? They keep selling. So there are some smart, smart guys or they have money. What they do is they now keep storing those things they are buying from the farmer. The corn, the corn, the soya beans most especially. Don't worry, I'll give you some of the prices. So, like corn then, it was 8,000 at immediately harvesting. Gradually, 10,000, 11,000. As I speak now, as I'm discussing with you, they are selling corn for 17,000 per that same bag. So, you see, you can you guess the difference without farming? But right now, you know, gradually as farmers were selling, 
the con uh, the produce is reducing. You don't have them much in the village areas again. Now you understand. So farmers, though, anything you are buying now, you are not buying from farmers. You are going to buy from middlemen, people that have stored it. So they are the ones that are now selling it now. And then farmers are already on the farm now. And these guys, by October again, by September, October again, they'll start buying again. And then they are the ones that supply to companies. Most of us that are from outside there, you know companies. Most of you have connection to companies. Most of you have, uh, they all, these, all these companies that buy all these things, they're in town. Farmers will not bother. Farmers will never bother themselves about going to town. They don't care. They don't bother. They just want to sell it. Just give them their money. And you, you are going. That is one business. The same thing with soya beans. Do you know, in 2014, I posted on Naira Land that uh, anybody, when I when I first got around there, I saw there are plenty of soya beans. So I posted, if you want soya beans, come and buy. I even wrote the price then. But do you know, then I don't know the... Uh, I didn't, it's not that I have them, but you now find people staying in the city, they will tell you, come and supply. No farmers will come and supply you. Nobody will come and supply you. But if you have your home money, you can do the network. You buy, you store it. And by the time you store, in the next, you can sell in three months, you can sell in four months. Though, you need to preserve it. There's method of preservation. So, those are the things, like grains. If you don't even want to buy from the southwest, go to the north. You can get these things in the north. Buy like a trailer load, the small trailer, there's trailer of 80,000 bags, there's trailer that, co that contains 130, 130 bags, there's trailer that contains, you are welcome sir, I can see you all, you are welcome, you are welcome. You, uh, there are trailers that contain, you understand, so you just tour them and then you can sell in one month, two months, three months. Then another difference is this, let me explain something to you. If, uh, if you buy from the southwest, uh, they don't, farmers don't sell in cage. Like, as I'm talking to you now, most of the farmers don't even know what the bags weigh. When they bring, when the bags, when they have the bags, they load the bags with the corn as much as it's filled. When they fill the bag, they don't weigh it. For me to know the weight, the size of their bags, I have to go and look for scale and pull and ask them, okay, put this bag. I want to know what is inside the bag. So you find out that the bags they are buying from farmers is like 120 kg, 125 kg of corn. And then you sell it at the company in kg price. So that is another system. In this system now, you find out that you only need just one or two trustworthy person, and then you need a place to store the corn. You can store it in the city. You can store it anywhere. You don't have to keep it. You're, you know what I mean. And then you, can, you sell off and collect your money. You are the one that will do the network for the company. You don't need to ask anybody to sell for you. The same thing, soya beans. I remember when soya beans was coming out. You see farmers asking people, come and buy, come and do this. Nobody. It's only those middlemen, some middlemen. And the middlemen that can't even buy everything. They can only afford some of them. So farmers will not be selling, selling it gradually because they know price will keep increasing. Like I told you, imagine corn from 8,000 to 17,000. Right now in the whole community here and some other surrounding community, nobody has the corn. Everybody has finished selling it. That is one business. I'm going to mention another second one before I start attending to some questions. Another second one, smart ones that I know you can do. Another smart invest, investment for somebody that is not on ground that you can really say. Let me mention this. If you have a land, you already bought a land. If you have money, you can buy land. Buy the land, make it like 10 acres or 15 acres depending on where you got if you have this land make sure you commit one acre of it you saw what i said i want to do the other time i said i want to excavate a place to get water and when i get the water i will use the water when i get the water i will use the water for i will use the water for irrigation in the middle of your land do rain harvesting everybody right now everybody shouting no rain even the farmers that have managed to plant with the little rains their corns are dying so now they know you need water. Let me do one calculation for you. Uh, rain stops around October, or uh, October ending. So it means we don't have rain in November, December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. Eight good months of no rain. Now when you have eight good months, or let's say seven good months of no rain, it means we are left with five months of rain. So as far as Nigerian farmers are concerned, and now Southwest even have highest numbers, highest number, highest rainfall than the North. So now what you need to do is create a, a, an harvesting system on your farmland. When you create the 
have, uh, the rain harvesting on your farmland. You lease it to farmers. But now, make no one mistake. Don't buy land where there are no farmers. Don't buy land because it's in the city. It has to see if you are doing business. One thing, there's one, one thing I understand about Nigeria. If we are doing business, most of us have these feelings that it has to be close to where I'm living, or it has to be close to uh, my other business, or it has to be. No, it doesn't have to. Provided it is going to get to something tangible. You know what I mean? So now in this case, when you have that land, if it's in a somewhere that land is quite affordable, we have area. See. What people don't understand, I don't put, in my own challenges of agriculture, I don't put an availability of land because land is not our problem in Nigeria. As I'm speaking with you, I can tell you places where you can get land for one acre, 50,000, 60,000, you get good acre of land. Acre of land is like six plots of land, but believe me, they are not in the city. You know, in the city, you pay millions to get plots. No, but I can tell you places, I can point to places that they are genuine land. You get good farmlands, an acre, 50,000, 60,000 years, you get them. But no, they are not in the city. Now, if you have that place and there's water, the farmers in that your community will come and use the land. You don't need to care about their crops. I'm going to tell you one challenge is, see, maintenance, we have poor maintenance of crops. Even if you have workers, this one challenge from one challenge to the other. So because of that maintenance of crops, so what you need to do is, look, get the land, uh, get the water there, and then lease the land to farmers. They'll pay you, they'll pay you month, and they'll pay you rentage, land rentage, and they'll pay you for water use. When they pay you for land rents and for water use, you get your home money. At the end of the year, you collect your home money. It's like house rent. When you build a house, you rent it, you lease it or you rent it to people. If they don't pay, you send them out. You give them what you understand. So they lease it per year or per you understand per year is preferably. And then and if you want to hard to hit a girl, you won't really want to you have the time or you have uh, and in that case of land, you don't need to monitor anything. You've given them the land, you've collected, and you collect your money before you even release the land. But if you really want to go a step further, you can now see, because most of these farmers, like I told you, when they grow all these crops, they are not ready to go to the city to look for the market. They are not ready to do any other thing about it. So if you can go a little step further, and connect with your people outside there or your friend and say, look, I have these farmers, they can supply you this, they can supply that. You still get some commissions from those farmers. They will readily give you because they know they won't source for market for themselves. You know, when, when you go to the farmers in the village and say, look, come and do this, the first, the first excuses they will give you is that there's no water, so they can't plant all year round. So they only plant when there's availability of water. When, after, they only plant when there's water. That's one. So your water, your rain harvesting will be solving a problem and to be making money for you. And you imagine that, see dams, dams are, most of the dams have been constructed long, longer years ago. So that's the same thing with rain harvesting. You keep using the water, the farmers use it and your land is there for you. Now, the same thing, you can look for market for them. So those are some investment I feel people that are not on ground can really, really look into. Another one of those investments you can look into again is, you see, uh, right now, managing a tomato or a pepper farm or a cucumber farm is stressful. And I'll tell you why. You won't get somebody to be waiting it for you every day. And those ones, they demand everyday continuity, everyday maintenance, everyday watching over them. But the best thing you see, don't do it alone. I was telling somebody yesterday, you can't do this thing alone. But look for like other people. If you have capacity to go 10 acres, look for some other people that can go for 10, 10, 10 acres. So you can look into palm, planting of palm tree. You can look, you can look into planting of palm tree. You can look into planting of uh, cashew, not too profitable now. Why? Because plenty of the farmers, cashew is easy to grow. So most of the farmers are just into that. So you can look at palm, you can look at cocoa, you understand? You can look at cocoa, you can look at palm, you can look at, uh, see, let me explain some things to you. Some, because most of us are looking for, okay, fast, fast, I want this money fast immediately. So we just look for, somebody say, I will give you returns tomorrow, I will give you returns next tomorrow. It doesn't work that way. But if you are, like for instance, if you are going to palm, this means you are going for three, four years, or even more than that that you, you put it down and you need somebody to be managing, to be looking, not really full management, but at least you need 
some care. So if you are like 10, do something like that. Instead of one, one of you having, you have your one uh, farm manager plus your one security man plus your one laborer from this, that means you're already employing five people. Another person also have won this with all these five people. It means if you are 10, individually you'll be employing five, five, five people. That is 50, which is a large population. But if you are 10 and you combine together, if you are staying individually, you'll be employing 50 people. But if you are combined together, you are staying together. It means the 10 of you will not deal with 50 people. The 10 of you might end up be, to be dealing with only 10 people. You know what I mean? So if 10 of you are dealing with only 10 people, it means you've reduced your cost of production. Even this same water I'm talking about, instead of you, if you have 10 acres, instead of only you doing one acre uh, irrigation, one acre rain harvesting, if you have up to 10 or more than that, you have 100 acres, you can do a big dam. You can create a big dam. And you see, how the farmers get the water to their farm is none of your business. Yours is that you allow them to use your water. Because I will tell you why. In some areas, you see farmers, they will connect in areas that have dams. You will see them. They will connect long, long pipes. They will go one kilometer, two kilometer, connecting water. Because they know what they will benefit if they grow this produce. Then I'm going to give you another example again. You see, when people in Nigeria, most times, when we grow, in the north, they grow plenty crops. When they grow these crops, you wonder, have you ever wondered why are they not exporting it? They are not exporting these crops as much as they are producing. They couldn't export it because they are not growing hygienically. Most of the things they are growing, uh, they use a lot of chemicals. They just do it anyhow or whatever. Even now, this post-COVID stuff or this COVID period, we don't even need to export. I'm going to just put it. Let's even come back from exporting. We don't need to export. Why did I say we don't need to export? They, we have... We don't have enough to start. You see, this is how Nigeria works. When it is a planting period, every farmers plant the same thing. After the planting period, there is surplus harvest. So during that surplus harvest, everybody will say, ha ha, we have plenty of farmers. We have... No, we don't have plenty of farmers. Those surplus harvest, they need storage. And this is another part where you can come in again. Let me explain something. You don't need to, when you want to do storage facility in Nigeria, you see, you can, you still need to go to the rural side again. In that rural side, you will see farmers grow plenty crops, especially those ones that grow perishables. During, when they grow those perishables at the same time, you can put a cold storage facility with solar system. There's a friend, there's a friend of mine, is in, uh, she's in Kenya, she's on Facebook, she, she exports. To Europe. She's a young lady. She exports, ask me what she exports. She exports herbs, uh, spices, uh, basil. You know what we call basil? In Yoruba, efini, basil. She exports basil. Uh, she exports uh, all these mints. You know what we call mints? And you know what? Those things are money spina. So if you create your water system, you can decide to get people to train those farmers on your on your on your land to produce what you can export see you can do the see is you can do the network you don't need to you know you are not going to be involved in their planting just just to come and supply you you understand but you can look for network first you need to look for the market create the market once you create the market, it's just, okay, farmers, if you can plant this, these are samples, this is the quality like we want, the demand in my place, this is it, this is that. You can even start with 10 farmers alone because all these things can be here freight. You don't need to have them. You understand what I mean? So those are, see, but if you as, <coughs> if you as somebody that is not staying here, you want to come around there and start a farm, it's not going to be easy. Like I said, it's not really going to be easy. You see, I have one main challenge as I'm speaking with you. I've been to several farms to check some farms for people. And I find out that when I'm checking those farms, you see the owners have spent so much and the farms are still not functioning. Sp plenty Abaddon farms, plenty, several Abaddon farms like that. And most of the owners of these farms, they are outside the country. They are not in Nigeria. Now, what is the challenge? Why are we not getting it right? Number one, we first have the, this mentality of, 
I want to make money on. I want to make it quick. I want to eat the jackpot. If you notice, most every of our youths are into. They are into uh, bet Niger, bet Niger, and all this stuff. So I was telling somebody recently. I said Nigerian youth don't work. Like I told you, we depend on people from uh, Burkina Faso. Initially, on my farm, I was using uh, Nigerian workers. You will do like this, you will not get workers. Things will spoil on your farm. You will not get anybody to do the work for you. So I have to resort to, we look for people from Burkina Faso, from this Togolese, Benny Nice. And these people come in March and they go by December. And so when they leave, if you do them very well, like the ones on my farm, we're already discussing. They will be coming back next year. And one of them even said, okay, he want to come with his wife. I said, that's better for me. When you are here with your wife, it means I'm more secured. You know what I mean? Because they, they, they will be settled here, which is better for me. So what I'm trying to say is that you can't go through all those challenges. And, okay, like the palm I was suggesting, if 10 of you combine and you're able to get like 50 acres, 100 acres, you don't need to do the 100 acres at once, please. But you can buy the land together because you if you do if you have the hundred acres maybe first time when you start do 20. you put your palm there or your cope see another child another thing you have to be aware you have to know which area is good for which crop like for instance in my place there where i'm staying uh cocoa is don't do well here in some places, you know, there are regions meant for different palms. I'm going to explain something. There was a video I shared about two, three days ago. And that videos I shared, I said, uh, in that video I shared, I said, uh, the video, it said, cocoa price doesn't fluctuate. The eh, cocoa price fluctuates. Cashew, not, cashew, not, cashew price fluctuates. Uh, all these raw materials, their price fluctuate, uh, fluctuate. But the end product, imagine cocoa price fluctuate, but chocolate price doesn't fluctuate. Because that is the end product. That is the value addition. See these cashew nuts. Two, three years ago, they were selling a bow in my place for 5000 In the last two, three years now, they were selling it for 1000 one five. They were even begging people to buy. To sell. I don't know if you understand. It means it's fluctuate, but the end product do not fluctuate. The end product do not fluctuate. You understand? So because the end product do not fluctuate, anything you are planning to grow or to plant, you should plan along with processing. You should plan along with a uh, value addition. Now, why did I, why am I introducing palm to you and some other things? If you are growing palm, how many of us that we're here, how many of us doesn't eat red oil? How many of us doesn't eat vegetable oil? Uh, you understand what I mean? So these are daily use. Do you know four liter, four liter of uh, red oil in my place is about 1,600. At times it is 2,000. That means a liter is 400 naira. So if you produce in your farm, you have a palm, like I told you, you have to wait four or five years. Join hands with some other group members, you have a palm tree. Before the end of that four or five years, you will have be able to do, even if it is local processing on your farm, and you sell directly. You sell. And these are demandable. Every house uses it. I have some questions here. So let me, I'll take the, the first question says, after my experience in farming, I've sent I've said that you need to do something different from local farmers, like dry season irrigation, to make good money from farming. What's your opinion? Yes, exactly. That's exactly what we have been saying here. I said, you need to be different. And even like I said, most times, you like the dry season farming irrigation, don't even attempt farming if you don't have irrigation system in place. Don't. And that's why it looks like if I'm preaching water, water, water. But I told you, for instance, having the irrigation is not the end of everything, but it's the start of it. For instance, the northerners, they have a lot of irrigation and they produce plenty, but it's come to wastage. Why is it coming to wastage? Two points. One point is that what they are producing is not hygienic. See, we eat poison in Nigeria. Yes, we are eating poison, me and you. Why are we eating poison? Because all the chemicals or whatever they are putting there, there is nobody monitoring them. So we just consume them like that. So we are eating poison. So let's monitor them. Then the cell, that's one reason why they are not being able to export or package outside the country where it is demanded. Again, it's storage. We don't have storage facilities, which is important. Like I'm preaching, 
People can join us together. I will discuss about storage. Let me answer this next question. Here. It said, please, do you have an idea of the minimum export quantity of vegetables through hair freight service to Europe? Yes and no. If you are hair freighting, you can hair freight any quantity. Doesn't have to be to be 10 k it's even you can if it's 10 kg they charge per kg so you can any quantity can go provided it meets standard regulations any quantity now let me explain something about exporting fresh vegetables and the, let me explain because i belong to a group that have agriculture fresh growers as part of addition of nigeria now in nigeria i think i've been saying this story over and over again i don't know in nigeria as of today as of today there is there is a plane there's a cargo plane that coming from europe that coming from europe every monday to friday is either every monday to friday or every monday to saturday when this uh, when this cargo plane comes it brings some things to nigeria and it's parked at our dear airport dh uh, it's parked at the airport here then they, it goes to ghana and the other european other african countries surrounding us to go and pick their granuts they export granite. They export garden egg. You know what they call garden egg? Igba ikon. Sorry, I, I use a lot of Yoruba language. Igba ikon. It's called garden egg. It's exporting. They export uh, rodo. These are banero pepe. They export, um, they export sweet potato. So, you know sweet potato is one of the easiest things to grow. We export sweet potato. We export chili pepe. You understand? So it can be in any quantity. I hope I answered that question. You don't, it doesn't have to be in any quantity. But all you need to set is to make sure it is up the standard or the quality they need. You can get, even if it is five farmers that will grow for you continuously. As soon, as long as the farmers know there's regular market, they will keep producing for you. And, but you have to teach them. Or you find somebody to put them through the good agricultural practices so that they won't use too much, they won't use those chemicals. See, there's something we call pesticide residue level. Once that pest, once that level is is more, there's a the test for it outside the country. In Nigeria, like I told you, we eat poison. But once that level, uh, once that pesticide uh, minimum pesticide level is is above, they will not collect the crops from you. So you can do that on work. Yes, there's no for here freighting. There's no it's, you can uh, freight any. I think in Nigeria there was a time they were uh, freighting ugu. Ugu and some leafy vegetables. These moin moin leaves. They have freighted it at Nako. I've been there about two, about some five years ago. Yes, the people are exporting that to outside the country. They do that in at Nako. Now another question. Uh, a lot of people think that you must have big acres of land or plenty of livestock before it can be brought profitable but that's not true you are right my sister see you don't i it is the management i always said it's more is profitable but it is the management i will tell you if you have half acre if you have half acre of land and your soil is good you know i've been shouting you see like i told you i hate soil i love biology when i was in secondary school but i hate soil when you talk about soil i like i hate it but now i've developed that interest in it i need i find a way to love it i think i'm still going to take it as a topic and put people through a lot of people i know are in the same shoe like me so if you take care of your soil very well and if you take care of your animals like you can integrate them you don't need two big acres well maintained is profitable for you in agriculture but like i told you the challenges we have is the maintenance the management the continuous maintenance the continuous management we don't have people that have that interest or that passion to keep it going until you get those kind of people. You see, there's a special care that some people give to dogs. You understand? If you have those kind of people, believe me, you are good. But that's the challenge I've been having. People that will really, that really have the passion. Everybody believe our Greek is difficult. Everybody believe our Greek is dirty. Everybody believe our Greek is for poor man. It's poverty. It's poverty mind. You understand what I mean? So that's the mindset of our youth. We really need to start from secondary school, from primary school, and change that orientation. Or else, we are, we are going nowhere. Okay, next question. Can mulching be used in plantain farming? Yes, yes, yes. Now you are going to use a gra the leaf of the plantain itself. You use it as mulching. Leaves. You know, it still falls down and everything. You use it as mulching. And see, when you use mulching, it protects the microorganisms in the soil. It allows them to be able to stay longer. Then it allows your water. It's a water. It's a kind of water retention. Water return, it's old water. The sun will not have direct access to that plant, and the plant will do very well. Yes, much is good, it's even recommended for planting for all crop. 
not only plantain. I produce chickens, not many, 150 to 200 every two weeks, but I'm involved in all the value chain from production to sales, and I sell directly to consumers, very profitably. Yes, I agree with you. Very, very profitable. If you go very, very profitable, believe me, I agree with you. And that's where most people get it. That's why I said small is profitable. You don't have to do a large piece. You don't have to. You don't have to. Except for palm plantations or all these other crops. You don't need large space. Because if you can manage it, you can stay with it. Actually, it's advisable that you're, you are living on your farm. You see, most of these people that are really making money, are living on the farm it's like it's your normal day life you wake up you enter the farm it is your house that is how you can maintain that integrated farming hello i'm watching you live from sokoto you are welcome sir you are welcome i hope i'm making some sense uh, i'd like to know the agricultural process involved in cultivating sweet potatoes and the productivity per acre okay I can tell you the, okay, you know what, I mentioned it, sweet potato is the simplest, easiest thing to plant, to grow. Now, let me tell you how you, grow, how you plant it, just briefly. It's just the leaf. You can plant it through the stem, and you can plant it through the leaf. But most times I plant through the leaf. As I'm speaking, I have some of it on my farm, because that's the only thing I love. I love this so much. I love eating it, so I always make sure I have it on the farm if not for sale, for heating. Now, that leaf alone, you just cut the leaf, and you put it in the soil. She cannot, it will grow. That's sweet potato for you. But the quantity per acre now, it's dependent on how rich your soil is. I think I was, I don't know if at the last lecture, maybe I will discuss yam. I'm not too sure. But if we don't, uh, if your soil, if your soil is good, your two bars will be good. As in, if your soil is, uh, is rich, you understand what I mean? If your soil is, you know, let me tell you something. When we are talking about soil, the richest soil are those dark soil. What makes them dark? Let me divert a bit. What makes those soil dark? One, because there are microorganisms living in it. Because they are the, they are the one, uh, the leaves, the grasses, the everything. They are the one that make it decompose over time and it becomes dark. You know, those times when we were growing up, you know those dust being close to our house, even up to now, those dust being close to our house, those places where we pour dirty something. Do you know there used to be one dark, very dark soil there? If you can make everywhere you want to plant anything, everywhere you want to plant anything, if I make it as dark as that soil, you will get burnt if it. And that is what everybody is doing. I was reading, I was reading, I, was, I just joined a group online, those uh, white, uh, white people's group, uh, vermicomposting. I saw the way they were breeding uh, uh, worms, you know worms, those red worms, ecolo. Sorry, if you don't understand Yoruba, red worms, ecolo, they were they are rearing it. Do you know what they are rearing it for? They reared it to develop their soil and to even sell as fertilizer. These worms, these red worms, wiggler worms or whatever, they reared it. So if your soil can be, believe me, you will harvest, like I told you, potatoes. There was a time on my farm, we did an experiment. You know, when I'm doing an experiment, we put much effort into it. So we did an experiment with potato on a raised bed, one long raised bed of potato. Some people can testify, some of the people that participate with me on the farm, on the one bed of potato with irrigation. You know, if you said, if I said with irrigation, because we put drip tapes there, we, they were harvesting, the day we harvest, just, just once, before, they, there was a day we harvested about three bags, three bags of, uh, of sweet potato, three big, three bags, and then several, consistently we were harvesting from just one bed. You know, now let me mention, let me tell you the when I say one bed, whenever I say one bed, it is 25 meter long and it is uh, 1.6 meter wide. And that one bed, you can get uh, 80 of it in makes one makes your one acre. 80 of that my one bed, it's what gives you one acre of land. So you can imagine. So the harvest is good, but like I told you, maintenance is important, or else you may not get that much. Okay, now I have another question here. Can you use normal white plastic to build a shade house for cucumber during dry season? No. Now, let me put it this way. Normal white, uh, normal white, uh, normal white nylon, we start with some little, I've done it before, so let me just, I've, I've done it before. Normal white, uh, normal white nylon, we start cutting, as in splitting into pieces the moment the sun, intensity of the sun is high. So if you use it, it's just like wasted effort. You don't. And then uh, 
to build a shader so no it is not advisable if you really want to build a shaders for cucumber you should go for you should really go for for the normal uh, the normal nylon micro micro the normal nylon that is used for greenhouse and then you can use net for the soradis but why do you actually want to grow cucumber in greenhouse because i'm going to explain to you how do you intend to pollinate that cucumber please you can let me know in the comments how do you out when you tell me how you want to pollinate it then i'll share my experience with you how do you want to pollinate cucumber in the greenhouse okay now uh, Ibra uh can normal black plastic also be used for mulching no i was to tell you my experience there i you know there is normal there's mulching film there's normal mulching film that we we'll buy i bought them and because i thought they were expensive you know because <laughs> because i thought i want to save myself money so i went to look for normal black plastic nylon just the one you are asking for now i bought plenty rows of it from ibada i even traveled to ibada to go and look for it and then we start laying them on the farm the, even as we were laying the nylon they were already tearing that's one then secondly before the the grasses when they are coming out they puncture the nylon and come out of the nylon one secondly again by the before the end it's can, before the end of that three months you know our products are three months two months four months before the end of that three months i see plenty nylon 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 on the farm which is another bad thing for you let me explain something if you use the normal plastic mush it doesn't really tear or, or, or get destroyed immediately and every other thing but if you now use the if you now use the that nylon it will get tear you to mess up your farm and anywhere nylon if nylon falls under the grass under the under the, under the soil it means any plant that is growing that rich where that nylon is it will not grow again and your plant will die so i have to create another work for myself i created another work for myself again to start picking those black nylons again that's why that is not they did not serve the purpose. So I will advise you, please, if it is not mulching in the real plastic mulch, please don't, don't use it. Okay, I know, yes, I know plastic mulch is expensive. And then ask them for a thicker one. The plastic mulch coming to Nigeria, the ones we have is not thick. So when you are buying, the one we are buying now is 35, 35 mm, maybe it's micrometer or whatever, I don't know, but 35 um, whatever. So, request for a thicker one. Actually, if I want to buy much, buy new one now. I even have still new one of the old type. If I want to buy much now, I will request for a thicker one. That thick one, you can be stepping on it on your farm. That thick one, you can lay it, you can use it for like several, uh, several, uh, this other one now, the one we are using, it stays several years, but it's too flexible for me. You understand what I mean? If you really want it to last long so that you won't really worry yourself, I think we should start requesting for a thicker one. I hope my much supply is here so that I won't get angry with him, but I still have to say it. I've told him anyway. So we need a thicker one if you really want to do vegetables. A thicker one is better for us. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. I plan to, to use just a shade house to reduce the intensity of the sun. The surrounding will still be open. Hey, you see, I, I think your cucumber, see, your cucumber needs sun. At least your cucumber needs minimum of eight hours sun. And it is even advisable, don't plant cucumber under the shade. Not only cucumber, don't plant every, okay, 35 microns. Thank you for that correction. Uh, yes, 35 microns, I think. So don't plant cucumber under, under the shade. Uh, plants you see they need they need good they need the sun to grow they need the sun they need you understand what i mean so planting them on the shade we even re, it's uh they will be striving to go to where they will see sun and it might bend this way or bend they bend towards the direction of the sun if you plant they bend towards the direction of the sun so you don't even need it. if it is cucumber no you don't need it the only thing if you say you are using nets i will agree that, okay you are trying to protect the pest and you will also need like if the surroundings is opening you don't need to reduce the sun our sun is okay i don't know well i don't know the type of cucumber you are planting as in the variety it may be a new variety or whatever but for the ones we've been using here yes they are okay yes yeah, somebody say outworm yes they're breeding outworm it's called vermicomposting and it's a very good seed you just find out that there's a lot agriculture is wide like i told you if we have good managerial system if you have people that are passionate there's nothing that stops me to advise 
farm. Put people in one one acre. Let them be running the farm, invest in them. But they will not. They will mess it up. You know what I mean? They will mess it up. So I don't advise that. I would rather advise. Okay, if you lease land to, if you lease land to people, they pay you. You collect your money and you let them be. You understand? But assuming we have good, dedicated people, like there's a man in, uh, there's a, there's a man in, I don't know, Uganda or whatever, KK Fresh. KK Fresh just invest in the farmers. He trained them, he put them through and everything. How they do is produce the crops. They bring to him, he collates it. He has the cooling fan. He has uh, the cooling room where he put it. He, and he exports to Europe and everybody is happy because you know your produce already have market. So you supply. You understand? Your produce already market. So you supply. So farmers are happy they are producing. If you can get people like that, but that, if you can't have access, if Something like that is possible where you can coordinate that. It's very, very fine. There's a lot. See, we have a lot of opportunities, but we have the biggest challenge we have is manager issue, as in having dedicated people, having somebody that really. See, most of the people we have around here are just about uh, if you employ me now, you pay my salary. I don't care whether your business is working or is not working. But assume it is people that is passionate and they feel, okay, if this thing is not functioning, my salary too will stop. But if it is functioning well, I can ask my boss to increase my salary. If it's those kind of people we have, they will put in more effort. They will even want to learn more. The excitement will be there. But you know, we have unfortunate. Unfortunately, our educational system did not put us through that one. So we have that big challenges. Now, I want to I want to go into sack planting. What are the vegetables we advise a plant man? You see, when you want to plant anything, anything at all, what is the market? Say, so what is the market you have? Where uh, who is demanding for that thing you want to plant? If I say plant cucumber, when you finish planting cucumber, we used to come and we like to be the one to look for market for you. So the first thing you need to first look for is your market. Okay, if you want to plant cucumber, first go and look for who are the people buying cucumber? How consistent are they buying? What quantity will they be getting from me? How do I produce? Then you go back to the farm. If you want to plant a uh, vegetable, the same thing. You need the markets first before any other thing. It is the market that will now determine what you will plant. Let me explain something to you. Uh, ShopRite pass. I have one I have one senior colleague in ShopRite. Most times they always joke with me, say, ah, we didn't see you again. I say, ah. Well, let me cannot plant what you have in shop right now and i'm not seeing anybody to, to join me you understand and the challenge you understand and the workers and everything so if assuming there's people that will coordinate like for instance my dream before was like if we have to if we have up to 20 like where i am i can have access to i have access to several acres of land so what of if i see you okay you be working on one acre you be working on one acre you be working on one acre we'll be working on one acre but at the end of the day Nobody wants to stay. It is tedious. It is not easy. It is not. Some will even go. They will not tell you when they will go. You just been waiting and you didn't see them again. You just know they are not coming back again. So it's been challenging having people to work. So I have to reduce what I'm producing to, you know, so that I, and so I just put, take my hand, mind off the fact that I want to be supplying big companies or I want to export. No, I, only me, I cannot produce. Or sex. Another thing I said I want to tell people that would like to invest. If you have fun, see, not that if you have fun, if you can buy machineries renting. Yes, I know I have questions, but let me just, let me just mention and explain this. When you have, uh, you have, uh, if you have money, there are some little, little machineries. I will tell you, these machineries, I, see, in Nigeria, when you, people, there was a time, most people buy tractors. They will call me, they want to give me tractor and whatever, so that I used to make money for that. I told them it won't work. I will explain to you. Do you know the people that have tractor most? Farmers, all those uh, farmers that have like 200 acres of land, 300 acres, they already have tractors. So they just put it down and they lease it to those ones that do not have. So if you, you come, you bring your own tractor, maybe you are calculating so plenty money on it, you won't get anything. You just be frustrated out of the system. But for like the water water system that you want to do in your place, you can buy, there's a machine we call, I, there's a, like I was saying the other time that if you have shaper, there, there's already tractor. Don't bother buying tractor. But there are some tractor couple implement. We have a mulching lane 
uh, implement. There's something you just attach it to a tractor. It will be laying that that plastic much I told you, we are talking about. It will lay it for you. There's a, another one, another just one attachment. Another one we attach to tractor. It will make raised bed for you. There's another one. You know all those little little attachment. If you can girl them out, so even if it is fairly use a one, you can bring them here and then you can lease it to farmers. It makes the work easy. You know what I mean? So instead of every tractor is common everywhere, there are plenty of tractors and everything. But if the tractor coupled implement, the one that will make the that will simplify the work is exactly what we need, not the anymore. Now, uh, during the somebody say, okay, okay, I've answered start planting. But uh -huh. now during the dry season, the sun here affects the heat here. Where you will get 10 back per harvest, we give like two during February of hot season. How about increasing your water? One, you increase your water use. Two, your manuring. You see, um, I know the sun is hot. I know, but you you need to, the, uh, the complement, all the other things that support it. If it's possible for you to increase them to, you know, for instance, if your soil is very good and the roots have access to good manure and water retention, then it will be able to fight. And then you need to increase your water usage. If you are giving your, if you are giving that plant one cup of water before, increase it to three cups. Yes, increase it to three cups of water, and you see the difference. I can promise you. You know, I plant in dry season too. Increase the water, and you will be surprised at what you will get. Okay. Uh, Somebody said, I wish you were in Lagos, man. <laughs> oh my God, no. I don't wish to be in Lagos. I really love where I am. Good life, good hair, no generator noise. No, You know what I mean? I love the village life, sincerely. I, I don't think I can live in Lagos anymore. No, not uh, for anything. Uh, I'm interested in the oil palm plantation, a uh, plantation farming. From your experience, which location is best for the yeet? See, yeet, when, uh, when you are talking of yeet, it's like I keep mentioning the same thing. You, uh, yeet is dependent on so many things. One, let me tell you something. If you said there's hybrid crop, there's hybrid seed, there's hybrid seedling, and you buy an hybrid seedling, then you now come on, to, you now go on to the, uh, thank God, you get, we have all, all, you now go to the top of, you go to the top of, uh, top of a rock, and you plant it there. Will you get results? No. So the same thing. When you buy, you, there are couple, uh, let me say, there are couplements, there are things you need to couple together to get good results. One, for instance, if you buy a uh, good, uh, good hybrid seed or best, best of the seeds, you need good soil for it to grow. You need the regular number or even better supply of water for it to grow. You need to do pest management. Your weeding. You see, your weeding must be, you know, must be top notch. You, there are a lot of things. So it is when you put one. Okay, for instance, let me use one simpler example. You want to, you want to cook jollof rice, and you just put rice on fire, and you say, yes, my this rice. They say this rice it swell very well and it's a very good rice. So you just put the rice on. You put the rice and you put it on fire, and you are waiting for your jollof rice. No. You need ingredients. You look for your curry, your thyme, whatever, and anything you need to make it to anything that you put together to make. And if you, you even need to add it at the right time. Let me explain something to you. If I have a farm, and I put you, if you, most people, this is the challenge, this is the mistake most people make. When they have farm, they put somebody there to manage it. If the, at the time you're supposed to weed, the person called you and said, we need to weed now, bring something, let's weed. And you now say, oh, no, I don't have money now. Then you send the money in the next two weeks. That your farm yield has reduced. It has reduced because as of the time you're supposed to weed, because you did not weed, those weed has compete with the plants to take out of the nutrient the plant is supposed to take. And you cannot get them back, no matter the quantity of whatever you put in it. So everything needs to be do, not need to be carried out at the right time, at the right space for you to get mad, to get the best of the result. Okay. I'm interested in the whole palm plantation family. Okay. Okay, I've answered that one now. I've just answered that one. Which machineries do you regard as the most important to small and medium scale farmers? The type that will improve efficiency, productivity. I'm thinking it could be much, much layer and bed making. It could be much layer and bed making machine, but I like to learn from you. I'm still a classroom student in agriculture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, now you see, 
One, I think much layer, yes, it's we need it. Farmers need it. I will explain with the much layer. They don't need uh see, I told somebody, like as I'm speaking now, I have new much I've not laid. Why did I not lay the much? Because of the stress of laying it. Now, if you want to lay much, you have to first lay it down, and then you will now take blade, or we take there's something we put in fire and we start puncturing it. It's a lot of work. So it's discouraging. But I saw a video, I told you, I saw a video, it's just that attachment. Attach it to tractor and boom. I'm sure that that uh, that much layer can lay with the tractor. It's what, the same way the tractors work. So it can do like five acres in a day. It increased the farmer's productivity. Then there's something apart from the much layer again. There's manure layer. There's something you attach again to the tractor. You just put the manure. All these are our poultry waste. All these are our goat waste that you are packing. You just put it there, and it will spread it. Manure spreader, spreader, and it will spread it on the farm. That one, it means in a day, a farmer can, in, they can do more. They can expand the farm. I said something, I wrote something the other day. We are competing with oils. Imagine weeding, we are still using manual weeding. And then most farmers have resort to chemicals. That's why they don't plant small, small things again. They prefer to plant something that they will just use chemical. Woo, they will just finish in two days. They, you understand? And the yield is decreasing because of the, even the chemicals they are using. So with all this much layer, uh, uh, fertilizer spreader, you used to spread fertilizer. Then planter. See, I will tell you something. China was China people are very smart. Do you know what China did? They did a planter that at the required distance. Planter, but this planter they did, eh? It was plastic. So you cannot use that planter to plant more than maybe two, three acres before everything scatter, scatter. So every farmer has to keep buying that plastic planter from Kenya. Uh, from China all the time, and you know, eighty thousand error. You can't even use more than five acres. Even before you use two acres, it will have start loosening up. So you have to start patching and patching. You understand? So if it's even fabrication, or if you can get the the planter that twenty five centimeter distance can be double more twenty five centimeter distance for almost all the crop, maize, cucumber, almost everything. Even soya beans even have. There's a plant seeder for soya beans. That one too will help. Let me tell you another something. I was telling you one story. Soya beans, uh, for instance, when people are planting soya beans, I just smiled. Because soya beans are supposed to be planted at 5 to 7 centimeter distance. And on a bed of soya beans, you're supposed to have 100,000 plant stand per acre. But you see farmers, they plant soya beans the same way they plant corn. So our yield for soya beans is usually very, very low. But if there's this plant cedar, there's something they call plant cedar. If there's this plant cedar, it's easy. You just put the seed inside and you drive it, just like the normal planter. So all these things, they, believe me, they will rent it from you. Let me tell you a story. About two years ago, I saw planter somewhere. I don't. Where did I? I just saw planter. So I introduced it to just one man in the village. Yeah. But it's the plant that plastic one. I introduced it to the man in the village. When the man finished using it, he started introducing it too. Started telling everybody. You find that people start coming to my house with the boys in my house to come and borrow that planter. All the people that that was two years ago. Everybody was using planter. But the discouraging part of it, like I told you, it's scattered. I tried to fabricate. Uh, another one, but you know our weather, you know our skilled people here, vocational people, they don't want to do anything different from what they have been doing before. So the guy was complaining seriously. He fabricated one halfway and then he stopped. We said, okay, do another one. He refused since then. So I just, that's how we don't have planter again. Now, Okay, so I hope I answered that question. So like the planter, the seeds. Uh, okay, for instance, if you want to plant carrot, you see farmer dropping one, 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 one. Meanwhile, there are machines that will plant the distance. The distance of carrot, soya beans, beans, carrots, uh, and some other crops, uh, they are supposed to be at 5 centimeters, 7 centimeters. Onion. I remember transplanting onion. It was the hardest work I've ever done in my life. Transplanting onions, you know, it's one one tiny tiny. I wish you understand what I'm saying Maybe some other time I'll start bringing videos from the farm when we are doing all those work So it is if you have those things believe me farmers will lease it They will pay for leasing because the work they do in five days. They can do it in just a day with little stress and Productivity will increase so it is those tractor attachment though it, Those tractor attachment if you have several of them you can do tractor and uh, equipment leasing Oh, they were lazy, but like I told you, it has to be a farmer-dominated area 
where you have plenty farmers, a rural community. You can go, if you put it in uh, uh, some uh, so areas where there's no farmer community, it's not farmer community. Nobody, they don't even, they won't even bother to come and get it from you. Okay. So I, I usually target. I usually target the period of peak planting period for harvesting pepper, which is now by planting since November. And it took me an acre to get up to 16 bags of pepper after seven months of intense care. <laughs> so. Green, uh, in the greenhouse, he uses design golf seed, which is very, very super good. What's your take on this? In, okay. I met a friend that harvested 13 bags in a greenhouse. Okay. See, greenhouse, like I told you, greenhouse is good, very good. But now, but because there are some, there are some and be, I want to believe, there are in your five acres, in, how many acres do you say you do? In that your acres that you did, there are some things that you manage there. They, see, if you do, if you put the same efforts, your greenhouse guy have bought a greenhouse worth about two million. So he is going to put this, let him do his cost analysis and you do your own cost analysis. You find out that you still benefited, you gain more than him. That's one. Secondly, because he knew he has spent much on that uh, greenhouse and all the special cares and everything, he's going to put a lot of effort in production. I don't know if you understand. Like I said, open pollinated, open, if you plant open outside, it's, yes, there are other things that will affect it. But like I was saying, if you put in your maximum if you put in your maximum, uh, your maximum effort from your soil, like greenhouse, there's nobody with greenhouse that use Nigerian soil. Ask them. Most of them import soil. They import uh, what we call cocoa pits. And this is the same cocoa pits. If I tell you what they used to produce cocoa pits, you'll be surprised. They import cocoa pits at exorbitant fee. That's what they used to plant. But if you can go through and prepare what they call the same cocoa pits, like I have, I know how to prepare the cocoa pits for you. The, you know, if those things, the same method they adopt in that is greenhouse, if you adopt it in that your open system, you will get times 10 of what is getting from that farm. Yes, I can bet it with you. Okay. So now, well done, I think. Thank you, sir. <laughs> the worst part is that the rain came irregularly this year and damaged 70% of the crop on the open feed in two days. Irregularly this year. Okay, let me explain something. Now, that rain that came, that destroyed, how is your soil when the rain came? Now, let me tell you something. When you, I'm sure uh, there's possibility that you use, uh, there's possibility that you use tractor plowed. When you tractor plowed, if one rain fall, the soil comes down. And when the soil comes down, what happened? The plant is standing alone. It's, it doesn't have any strength. It's standing alone. But if you have a good system, a good, see, it's like building a house. When you build a house and the foundation is not strong. I know you've tried. I'm not condemning everything you've said. But I'm just trying to put, bring you to some point. If you are building a house and the foundation is not strong, if the breeze comes, it will blow it away. See, most of us when we are planting, we don't build a good house. Yes, I'm not saying you might not have challenges. But we need to first put all these things in places first. And then you can be convinced. If you, see, if you are convinced that, look, there's still something I've not done well. People know me here. They will say, ah, like it go. I try to see to the end of something. What exactly caused these things? Why is this thing doing like this? Why didn't I get it right? You know, ask people. Even if I don't make anything, I'll still try to repeat it and use another 16, another method. That's what I've been trying, I've been doing on the farm. So try and look at it as, okay, how did my soil? Or pick all these points we've been discussing and use them on a demonstration point, plot. And then let's know the results. Okay. I want to work on an experimental project to supply common Nigerian vegetables, let's say 100 Nigerians in my state and environment monthly. As I notice, it's of quite a demand. But my challenge now, but my challenge, uh, but my challenge, uh, okay. But my challenge now is to know if I have to be an importer and a reliable partner in Nigeria in case there's anyone here interested. Okay, let me, let me, I, let me still go. I don't understand it. In my state and environment monthly, as I notice, it's quite demand. But my challenge now is to know if I have to be an importer. Now, let me, this is what I understand. Those people that I said they were exporting from 
uh, from narco they were exporting vegetables they were taking vegetables to europe this is how it, they operate then like if you have somebody in nigeria that is growing all those ve this is what they do they don't even have somebody what they do then i think i don't want to mention the company because we went to do some trainings there what they do is that there are farmers in some areas in Ejibo, in lagos there's a place called Ejibo near joshua tb joshua's church that corner so there's some if i'm correct yes there are some there's a farm there's a farm there's a canal there where they are planting ugu and all this stuff so that place there those people that we went to their office there they buy that ugu from those farmers that are growing it, the local farmer then when they buy the ugu from the local farmers they package it in boxes there's a boxes designed for it and everything so when they design the boxes because you have to punch it there's a way they punch it so that here will still be entering and then they go already you know these people that they buy this thing they already have a contact in you outside the country or they themselves used to fly out because i know the woman used to fly out so she she already make the contact outside the country so it is a contact I already expecting just like you said they are expecting your community so she does she did in that case she's not in the normal regular importer the only thing you need now is uh, at the airport there at narco there's a quarantine there's a quarantine office there's a uh, there's a quarantine officer that will sign some papers for you which is just to be candy is just formality because they don't test anything so they sign the papers for you and everything and then you move it up since see this kind of uh vegetables now you already have people Af african or you already have your people that want to collect it in your state or wherever so because it is you that is taking it or sending it to your people it's like a package it's like you send parcel you know nobody need to inspect it or whatever because you already have whom you are sending it to so that is how they send that one at uh at narco day so it's not that it went through the normal intensive it is when you want to supply shop okay that time that those people i don't want to mention them i'm trying i don't want to mention the company that company wrote to a to there's an organization that i partner with i do some little little work for it's called collier cp so collier cp trained people they put people through the good agricultural practices the the things you need to put in place on your productions and everything for you to be able to export so because this is what collier cp does so this uh, this company i don't want to make they wrote to collier cp that collier cp should come and inspect their company because why all these goods they are bringing they used to they take gari ugu and even only so all these things they are taking you know they have their own cost their own people that buy it from them they now want their produce to be appearing on chef outside the country they want their produce to be appearing on chef and if you but if you want your produce to be appearing to be to be i think to be able to place your produce you want to package on chef it means you need to go through the normal stringent uh every step in total of the certificate of the this of the that of the that so when we went there i was a trainee to them i was a trainee to that organization so i was there to were following the, they sent somebody down from outside the country so i was a trainee to the person to learn what is required what is needed for them to move their produce out but i don't think they meet that standard no they did not eventually so you don't have to be an importer you just need one you need your market outside there and then you need your producers here if you get your producer here and you have your market there it's just a matter of packaging and every other thing but if you want it that's if you have people that will collect directly and they don't mind this all these certifications but if you really need to take it uh through this you want them to be placing it on sheds and all this course and uh, what do you call it, all this your shops and everything it means you need to you need to register I didn't use a raised bed. It was flat bed that support the check base irrigation that we use here. Good. You know, I didn't know even before I sell this. Now, if you use a raised let me explain what I did. Last year, there was plenty of rain. So I know there will still be plenty of rain. When you use a raised bed, there's a foot part. You know, your raised bed should be about 30 centimeters high. So there, should, there will be a foot part in the midst. That, that foot part, when rain is falling, then another thing, when you are making your bed, this is another mistake, another challenge many people make when you are making your your bed your bed must run along the uh, across the slope what do i mean across the slope if is if erosion is coming straight like this your bed must go this way you know why it's cutting that erosion that flooding 
for your plant. So when you now raise the bed across the erosion, when the water, the rain falls, those water, instead of them washing away your bed, they will stay in between the beds. I remember on my farm, whenever it rains, we, you won't be able to walk. You know why? Because the footpaths are already soaked with water and they will be slippery. So those water, we have to leave that they will eventually sink in back into the bed. You understand? But if you now, if you're assuming the bed is just the same, the same direction that along across the slope, what happens? It wash it away and it takes your plant away. So those are the things. Now I told you. So you need your bed must be across the slope, and when it is raised, it protects against erosion. Instead, your footpath will become soaked with water. That's it. Okay. Now uh, I heard about your bed high chili program. What does it entail? Hmm. You see, the bed high chili program, like in Nigeria, yeah, like I was saying, no need for Facebook. In Nigeria here, we have there's demand from uh, all these uh, FCMG. Let me mention one, like all these Indomies. They import peppers, they import spices, even onion flakes. They import uh, so many things because they use those things. They uh, they use those things to prepare spices. All those spices we get inside Indomie, inside our noodles and everything. They use it to prepare it. So. But instead of waiting for us, Nigerian farmers, because they know our produce is not reliable, so they choose to go and import. They import from countries outside. Yes, they import dry, grounded pepper. That's what they use. Now, my chili program, I tried to set up a chili program. And the essence is that, okay, if you, you manage one acre, you, you manage one acre, you, you manage acre, then we can collect and go to the market. But it has not been really working. I must confess to you. So what I do now is, now there are challenges. One, like I told you, making raised bed is the difficult system. You know, like I was saying, if not now that I'm mentioning that, if you have a bed shaper, then it will be easy for us to make raised bed. Do you know how to make raised bed? It's very difficult. So we, we have to look for this, these boys from Burkina Faso and everything that makes it. You even pity them. Even me, I don't want them to make it again. I'm looking at a way of getting that shapers and everything so that the, you understand that is one challenge. So neither, even you, nor I, or most of the youths, all of us, nobody can withstand that bed. Nobody can make it. None of us can make that raised bed. No. I understand that. The second challenge we're having is seed. You see, this year you use a seed. It performs very well. It's very good. You start shouting and everything. Next year, you may not find that specific product again. You know what I mean? For instance, if the seed come out and you use this chili pepper seed and it's really beautiful, it did well and everything. You know, the next thing for you next year is to look for the same product. You might not find it again. So by the time you bring another product again and use it, you don't know what it will bring. It might mess you up. So those are the main challenges we'll be facing on the farm. You understand? If, if you got it right this year, next year again, something like the seed, like you understand me then, like I told you, the raised bell, the mulching. I told you what I did for me to even go and buy nylon for mulching. It was another disaster again. So, but if you have, in, if you, you can, you understand. So those are the steps by steps. But believe me, it's a very good produce. Because, for instance, if you have, there's no quantity of chilies that you have. There's no quantity of chilies that you have. But you have, you dry it and you blend it. That doesn't have market. But the challenge is produ production is even on issue first. You understand? If you get, like, there was a time I got uh, this Thailand F1. It was very good seed. As I speak with you, you can't find it again. If you use, you understand? So those are the big challenges. Several times I've said, okay, I'm looking for this seed and whatever. At the end of the day, you won't find that product again. And the, challenge, the problem we have there is because we don't have seed producers in Nigeria. All these things are import. So it is what they can get. You know, it's not that it's intentional for them to, maybe they bring this on, they are not producing that product again, they have to bring another one. You know, it's been, that's the challenge we've been facing. Having consistent, consistency. So now, imagine, I, I went to collect, okay, the other time at Indo and Nodus, they said we should bring samples, we should come and, so that we come and tell them how much, quantity, what quantity we can be supplying, whatever. I didn't go back again. I told the guy, no, let's not go back again, because I don't want to mess up myself. If I go there, you know, we don't have, those are the challenge we have. And even, so even the domestic market, that's why we've not even been able to fill the domestic market. That is the challenge. We've not been able to even fill the domestic market. So if we, those are the little, those are the things we really, really need to, you understand. So if not, agriculture, believe me, we have a lot of positive advantages if we can really work towards those things. 
okay so i hope i've answered uh, that question and so those are the things like i said i think uh <laughs> forever f1 yes forever uh, forever forever of one is a very good product it's big and everything but it doesn't survive rainfall you know too much rainfall you will still start dropping yes but it's a very good product if in dry season but in rainy season it will start as in it will start decaying even while still on the on the plant while still on the on the plant it starts decaying so if the one last question if i don't have a question then we'll just round it up and uh, like i said there are a lot of opportunities and i've mentioned about at least two three for those that are not things you can manage so uh, from afar like i told you and if you are here you are with us you have young ones are in you have young ones at home you have young ones looking for certificate or you have young ones that is always asking you for money bring money for this food bring money for this thing please tell them to come and learn something you see there's you we, they don't have to farm but they can learn something that will be good for themselves see like i told you we are shouting every every force is downsizing but like I told you, right as I speak with you, hardly is any day that people don't call me, they, are, they need farm manager. And I don't have. And then, let me tell you, it's not even about me having farm manager. It's about me getting somebody that is dedicated. Imagine people have money. They want to invest. They want somebody that will just look after it. And, but we don't have. We don't have. And right, go to Naira Land. Go to Naira Land job section. You will see they are all looking for a job that is non-existing but the one that is existing nobody to fill them up like i said partnership for people that are not on ground partnership i would suggest partnership for you sincerely because if you say you want to do it alone there's no see number one even by the time you do that partnership there will still be a difficult orders to cross that difficult orders is the management uh, the management you know what i mean the people because you need trustworthy somebody that will, you understand me you that is another step that we are still i'm still looking at how do we cross this step let me answer the last question eh? what is the name of the implement for raised bed riches they call some people call it bed spread eh, bed shapers some people call it bed shapers or you can just google raised bed eh, making or bed shapers it shaped the bed for you you see the pictures and everything but that is after you have plowed and then you had your manual. After you've plowed and you had your manual, again, the bed shippers can come in and you'll be glad. Believe me, there are a lot of opportunity. So let me, I want to use this opportunity to say thank you. Question. Thank you. Okay. Last question again. <laughs> what is your take on sweet potato farming during the dry season? What do you think would be the challenge? See, I think I will uh, sweet potato. If except if you have market for it, plant it during dry season. But if you don't, if you are going to the normal regular market, plant it in rainy season. Like I am doing now, I'm expanding my sweet potato in rainy season. You know, when you expand it in the rainy season, by dry because it's not, it grows very fast. It's a very like I told you, it doesn't have much water. It doesn't, and once you establish it, it's. For, th for years, you will not go there except you kill it with chemicals or anything. You understand? Once you put sweet pot uh, potato in somewhere and it's established, <laughs> you beg to remove it from there. Just make sure you leave that place for sweet potato because it will keep growing, it will keep growing there. You can't remove it from there except you just intentionally kill it. So it's better plant it in rainy season. Plenty, plant plenty of it. Even in dry season, uh, uh, I know I love some people even use the leaves. They buy the leaves and everything. Establish it in rainy season. Now, the major, major problem I notice is we like to do things individually. Partnership is the only... Uh, see, that is the... Like, I used to tell people, we can't all be CEOs. I don't want to be called CEO. I prefer partnership. When you partner, when you partner, you really... You, there's a way the cost reduce, the management reduce, so many things reduce, you know, but... Be here, everybody wants to be, I'm the CEO, it is my farm, it is my place, or I want it close to my place. Let me tell you a brief story before I leave. I, most people are surprised. I'm not from Oyo State. I'm not even related to Oyo State. I'm not from this side at all, at all. But I choose, because of what I want to do, I shifted here. 
I was looking for land and because I just wanted to have access to land and I understand all your state have plenty land. That is why I came. I don't know if you understand. So I, if I was telling, I, I was telling some people, I said, if it is anything that I know, it will benefit everybody. It will benefit me to benefit you. Why not partner instead of being a CEO of doing nothing? We can partner together. People can come together. Yes, people can really come together. But yeah, it's a difficult. It's difficult bringing people together. But I think we need to work. We need to see how group teams can come together. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You are welcome. And so next week, next week, you are welcome, sir. You are welcome, sir. So next week, eight eight o'clock. And let me apologize. We have a break in transmission today. You know, we are villagers on our network. I thank God I have my phone around. I have my everything at the corner. If not, I will have felt so bad. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the question. You see, when you ask me questions, it motivates me because I feel I like to share the little I know with people. See, there is something we don't understand. Imagine, I watched, I saw something the other time. Uh, Kenya, Ghana, they'll be loading cargoes. They'll be loading fruit and vegetables to this place, to that place. And here, the, uh, the giant of Africa. You don't have anything going. It pains me to tell you. Do you know there's a group, the Collier CPI I told you, they've sent me several to several trainees, several days. But yes, I feel bad. Uh, we don't even have anything in Nigeria to offer there. Sometimes they will offer grants, they will offer this, they will offer that. But mm, we don't have anything here. Let's see. I hope maybe with time we might be able to do something. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for watching. Till next time, 8 p.m. Saturday. We can reserve your questions. We meet them. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.